Hi there, you're watching Dukoscopy TV. I'm Ben Jones. Jean-Francois Ovzazak is back alongside me in the Dukoscopy TV studio. Jean-Francois, once again, thank you very much for joining us. Hi Ben, uh, thanks for having me. Not a problem. So this week is pretty much Euro focused towards the end of the week with the ECB rate decision and press conference. So should we go straight in and look at currencies? Yeah, sure. Uh, so we are back on our FinGraphs uh, mosaic for this Dukascopy show with uh, Euro dollar, cable, Australian dollar, gold, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, three months S&P futures and a three months uh, treasury futures. Let's go into the euro and uh, the differential between what's happening in the States and in Europe is going to be the most impo important part here. And uh, we do have the ECB meeting and uh, t the TLT arrows, which may be completed by some uh, quantitative easing. Um, the euro has already anticipated this news quite a bit and uh, hence the, 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 the strong downtrend that we've seen over the last few weeks. Uh, it may be a case of uh, uh, sell the room, buy the news, we'll see what happens. Uh, but there's also a lot of news in the US. I mean, we've had some uh, positive news on, uh, on uh, the manufacturing PMI earlier this week. And then we have uh, ADP employment report, we have the non-farm payrolls, we have a trade balance report, and I think we have also uh, the non-manufacturing PMI. So uh, uh, let's see if America could keep their uh, momentum on this fundamental side and uh, see what the Draghi's has to say to us. Now back to the euro, and this is the investor's view. So it's our longer term view, and it combines a, a weekly, a daily, and an hourly chart. And um, what we try to do at FinGraph is to have an at-a-glance view of how the trends interplay. So by, uh, by um, picturing them alongside each other, you could in a few seconds get a first instance of, uh, of what's the situation. So here you have a long-term bull, medium-term bear, short-term bear which is labeled a potential consolidation period and an uptrend. Both medium and short term are heading down, long term is heading up. Now if we go and uh, caveat this a bit and go into the charts, let's look at our weekly chart. And uh, if you see this indication here, so the weekly is one point every week and it basically gives you the perspective over the next quarters. Um, the move up from, from mid-2012 is labeled a correction up. That means it never was able to make it to a robust impulsive move. In order to do so, it would, ha it would have had to move above the its corrective targets, which are close to about 130, or here 139.93. So uh, this move up, only corrective, which uh, had been in, ex in existence since mid-2012, reached its targets and seems now to be rolling over. Now, in this perspective, let's have a look at the daily, which is uh, the medium-term chart. So if we go on to the daily, we see that uh, the downtrend is... Uh, is in place and uh, started um, earlier this year. Uh, it had turned impulsive around um, the 135 mark here uh, uh, towards um, uh, the month of July. And now it's showing impulsive targets, which could lead us down to 132 to uh, the high 129s. Um, there's still a few more months to go. So, I mean, this move doesn't seem finished. And uh, we may see these uh, targets revise down a bit as volatility accelerates. Uh, the targets are calculated on historical volatility. Now, if we look here, we do have a bit of exaggeration at the moment. Uh, the short-term envelope is hitting against the longer-term envelope, which is a sign of uh, support, or if you're into the upside, of uh, resistance. And uh, the oscillator, the risk oscillator, is in the oversold. Now, to really confirm a turning point, you would need to see the smaller envelope start turning up, and this oscillator also moving higher in ideally making it out of the oversold zone. So we can't really call an intermediate bottom yet, but we're in a zone where it does seem that short term, it is a bit exhausted. And so we're going to see if we can monitor this exhaustion by going to our shorter term time frame, the hourly. So now up to the hourly, and you see the targets are labeled here, impulsive two, I2. That's, uh, the, that's the most aggressive targets that we calculate. They are meant for very strong uh, extended moves. Uh, when I was here about 10 days ago, we thought we'd have one last move which would go to go test the bottoms. Seems to be pretty much done. Uh, we still would have, theoretically, a bit more to go uh, in terms of uh, what we measure with our, our volatility and our targets. But it does seem quite um, 
overextended here too. So I, I would say the risk reward has widely deteriorated over the short term and that uh, at some point over the next week or so we may see this bounce uh, happen, maybe already happening. Uh, but uh, what we could say is that a large portion of the move down for the time being on Euro is completed and uh, however in the context of a longer term move which will bring us lower over the next few months. So only an intermediate uh, potential reaction. Now, interesting event last week on sterling. Um, sterling still seemed to uh, be heading down over the short term, but it was a lot of exaggeration. And I'm, s I'm, I'm starting here just to point out that we're well into the impulsive two targets and we could probably monitor the same type of exhaustion over the short term that we have on the euro. Now another event happened last week on the medium term, which is the daily, which had been heading down and was hitting against its corrective targets. What well, went through these corrective targets? Uh, over the last 10 days, initiated an impulsive move and with targets which are now showing um, uh, a zone between 158 and 161. So that means that uh, the move which up to now had only been a corrective move has proven it's robust enough to make it uh, further over the next few months and further in terms of price potential. And usually we have about 70% uh, uh, to three quarters of, 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 of price moves that go from corrective to impulsive that actually reach those uh, impulsive targets. So it is a strong indication that uh, the weakness of sterling is probably uh, there to last over the next few months. That said again, the short term here is a bit overextended, so we could see a reaction over the next week or so. Fantastic. And very briefly, should we go ahead and look at golden equities? Sure. Well, just maybe a quick snapshot mm -hmm. at uh, yen, where, where we, we were in an uptrend, we were seeing uh, Targets on the dailies up to 106 and a uh, bit of exhaustion here also over the short term. Uh, so it may not happen over the next week or so, so it may come down a bit. But our targets on the dailies over the next month or so are still, are still heading up at the moment. Now looking at the mosaic into gold. Well, last week gold was in a neutral situation and we had concluded that given that, that the long term was still on a strong downtrend, and given that uh, the hourly, so the short term, was resuming the downtrend, it was overall a negative. Now it seems like uh, the dailies finally gotten out of this neutral situation and back into a downtrend. And so now we have all three uh, time periods in a bear, so uh, a weekly bear, a daily bear, and an hourly bear, which is labeled a potential continuous downtrend. So we're moving lower. The targets are quite aggressive here, uh, below 1,200 over the next few months on the daily which pretty much match the targets that we here have here in uh, between uh, 9.53 and 1170 on the weekly over the next few quarters. And uh, the daily, still a bit more to go over the next week or so, but slowly, I mean, we, uh, next time we speak in 10 days, we might be signaling an intermediate bottom here. But at the moment, it still, it still seems like it's moving lower at the moment. And quickly on the S&P, and uh, the S&P is here, well, we had uh, signified that the long-term linear uptrend uh, still had a bit of potential up to 2,200 in the best case scenario but that also there it was slowly getting into a point where the risk reward had deteriorated over the long term because of the stress of the envelopes, the very high risk index and the fact that these I2 targets were al almost fulfilled. The daily was pretty much exhausted too but still seemed to have a bit of time and price potential and uh, over the next few months, we could still uh, justify prices moving up to uh, 2034. Uh, and finally, similarly, the daily is not quite finished yet, and we have targets around 12, uh, uh, 2020 or 22. So uh, it doesn't seem like this short term move is finished yet, and we could probably see last move up another 20 points or so, which will bring uh, the targets of the hourly and the daily in line. Um, that said, Maybe only an intermediate top because uh, the, the, the weeklies still have a bit to go, maybe towards the end of the year. And uh, that's pretty much it for today. Fantastic. Jean-Francois, once again, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. And thank you for watching. Jean-Francois will be back in two weeks' time. But until then, make sure you keep clicking back for plenty more updates and exclusive interviews. Bye for now.